going on everybody welcome back to my channel this is the love after lockup review season 2 episode 21 truth and lies um, before we get into the review if you have not done so already please remember to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will be up to date whenever I upload my latest content all right so let's just hop right into it um, happy weekend I hope everybody is having a good weekend so far because uh, I am um, it's been eh, it's been okay, not, but it's been a good, good weekend all the same. I've just been chilling with my son. But um, anyways, let's start it off. I'm going to go couple by couple, okay? Brittany and Marcelino. So Brittany is basically saying how she has had to cram 10 years worth of adulthood into a year, okay? You know, she got out of jail. She was locked up for seven years. She got pregnant. She got married. Now she is taking care of her son full time. She got a new dog and um, she got a new house. And so it's a lot on her plate. She's actually a stay at home mom right now. And Marcelino, he's the one that brings in the main source of income. And his main source of income is poker. He plays poker three to four nights a week, right? And so she's basically seeing how she has a lot on her plate and how a lot of times she feels, it sounds like just from what she's describing, it sounds like she's going through some kind of postpartum depression and everything. Everything is kind of hitting her all at once. I could be wrong. That's just what it sounds like. But um, Marcelino is on asshole level 10. Like he, Well, not quite a level 10. I give him about a level 7. But he's an asshole all the same. He basically says to her, like, what? You can't handle it? Like, I go out three to four nights a week because I'm trying to provide for, for you all. I'm trying to be there for you. And I'm trying to be there to take care of the kids. And I'm trying to, you know, take care of, of everything we got going on. Yes, granted, he does bring in a big source of the income. At the same time, you ain't got to be an asshole about it, okay? And so she brings up the, the shit that happened where, you know, her homegirls were over there, Sasha and Amanda, and um, she asked Amanda to hold the baby. And he was like, well, how come you can't hold your own baby? And basically, he's like, it is what it is with them. My whole thing is I don't want you hanging around felons, and I don't want you getting your ass back in prison because ain't nobody got time for that. I know them your homegirls, but um, look. I'm only worried about you and you only. And like she says, I mean, you can't trust me to make my own decisions. Like I'm not smart enough to get out here and get my ass back locked up, which yes, I, I, I get him being overprotective. But at the same time, to me, Brittany seems like she's mature enough to do what she knows she has to do for her, for you, for her babies, for her safety and all that. Marcelino just needs to chill out. I like Marcelino. I, I really do like him. And I like that he's real into his family and he's into protecting them and all that. But my nigga, you gotta chill though. It's it's okay. Like chill out though, dog. Y'all, so next we got Clint and Tracy. And y'all, Tracy is determined to meet Clint mama. I don't know what like they driving right. She they going to his mama house. They get out the car. Well, she gets out the car. No, I take them back. He gets out the car because, you know, like I said, he put it to his mama's house. His mama don't like Tracy goddamn ass. She don't want her ass on the property. She can't be nowhere around there, right? So, before he goes into the house, she's like, look, basically jack this nigga up. Like, look, make this happen. You better make this happen. So, he's like, he nervous in the hook in church trying to go up there to the mama door. He don't even go to the front door. Or he tries to go to the front door. I think with that house is so big. Clint, mom and dad in them houses. Man, that's a nice ass house. That, man. Anyways, so... He goes all the way around to the back of the house, goes, knocks on the door, whatever, go in the house, long story short. Um, oh, but real quick, do y'all notice Clint and Tracy look more and more crackheadish? Every time we see them, it's just the crackhead comes out more and more. Tracy is skinnier and skinnier every time you see her ass. Clint looks, she got Clint on that shit. She got Clint on that shit because he didn't look like that at first. He just looked regular worried. Now he looked worried, worried. Like, she got Clint on that shit. Po, po, ting, ting, po, ting, ting. So he go in the house. He meet with his mom, whatever, right? And so it's real awkward because he already know his mom finna fucking snap. As soon as he tells her that Tracy is there, she finna fucking snap. And that's exactly what the fuck happened. <laughs> Mama snapped. She was like, what? Now, Clint, I can't believe the audacity of you to even bring her in my direction when you know I do not like her. She goes and walks and looks and looks out the window, put her head on the hip like, yeah, this bitch got a lot of nerve bringing her ass over here on my property. And Clint, you got a lot of nerve bringing this heifer over here on my property. Mama was about this close 
going into her back closet and pulling out that shotgun because she was finna pop a hot one in Tracy ass. She wasn't trying to hear that. So she told Clint, look, I'm gonna need you and your girl to go on, get the hell on away from my goddamn property now, right? So he goes outside, he tells Tracy, he's like, you know, um, I tried and, uh, you know, it's a no-go. Tracy calls herself getting pissed off and then wants to get in the car. It's like, you know, forget it, whatever. No, let's go. It is what it is. He is like a little baby around this woman. It's so sad. He's just like, okay, um, I love you. Uh, she like, if you don't get your motherfucking ass in this goddamn car right now. Long story short, his mama don't like you, Tracy. And it's going to take a whole lot for her to want to talk to your ass. But, sir, give it up. Just. One thing that Tracy does say that Clint needs to watch out for. Tracy was saying that it's times like this that make her feel like she wants to go back to using. Because she feels alone. She feels lonely. She feels rejected. And drugs were her way of getting her mind off of things. It was her healing. And so she's itching to go back to that shit. Clint, you better keep both eyes on her. Because this time she might not even leave the ring. She going to take everything. <laughs> okay, this next one, y'all, was funny as hell. Scott and Lizzie. Okay, so we going to start off in the beginning. Okay, so Lizzie is FaceTiming her daughter, showing her different outfits or whatever. Because she's trying to get ready for her blind date that she met online, right? She's showing all these kind of titty popping shirts and just everything that I would not want. I would not encourage my mama to put on her body. No. Mama, you don't you go put that away and go get something to fit your body. Don't do that. And so her daughter's just agreeing with her, telling her this is cute, yada, 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 right? Meanwhile, Scott getting ready for his date as well. So we're going to start with Scott and his date. So Scott is sitting at the restaurant, waiting on his date to come, thinking that maybe she ain't going to show up, but lo and behold, she does show up. Nice looking black chick. We already know Scott like him some chocolate or whatever. So the um, date comes and sits down and, you know, they sit and talking for a second and he's like, no, she is like, um, are those for me? She had to remind this fool to give her flowers. He was like, oh, my bad. I, I you know, I, I forgot. It's, it's been a minute. I ain't really know how to do this. Like, Scott, come on now, Scott. Don't, don't. <laughs> Don't do this, Scott. I'm rooting for you, bro. I'm rooting for you, bro. I'm rooting for you. As soon as they order drinks, as soon as they get to talking, he goes right into talking about Lizzie. Immediately starts talking about Lizzie. My ex-girlfriend was a felon. She was in jail for 10 years. I spent somewhere over $143,000 on her on the course of our time being together. And um, she left me. And the date looking like, what the fuck? I'm like, Scott, oh, why you doing this, God? What are you doing? So she's like, okay, so basically, um, she won't, didn't want to say basically you're a trick, but that's not what she said. So she was like, so okay, if I was to tell you that I needed money to open up my yoga studio and you were to give me the money and I would disappear for months and I didn't see you and then all of a sudden I just pop back up, everything would be okay? He was like, yeah, I'd probably do that right now if you asked me. Yeah, I'd probably do it. Scott, Scott. If that's how you throwing out money, I need a whopping 50 grand. Give me 50 grand. We can text good morning back and forth to each other. It can't be nothing else more than that. I can show it to my husband every day. Hey, if you give you giving it out like that, I mean, God damn, Scott, God damn, Scott. Oh, Lord have mercy. So that was Scott in his day, right? So before the date is over, she, <laughs> it was funny as hell. She was like, okay, so what I take from this is that you you need help. You need some kind of counsel. Matter of fact, have a crab cake, my nigga. So she gave him some of her damn crab cake. And once the date is over, she's like, look, you know, I think if he was to get his mind together, he was to get him some help, one day he's going to find the woman of his dreams that he's supposed to be with. But that woman just ain't me. No, it's not. She wasn't having that shit. She could see all the flags. Scott, you are a big old trick. A big old dumb trick, okay? That was Scott and his date, Alexis, right? So, it's Lizzie and her date. Her date, um, I don't know what to say about her date. I don't, he was definitely an actor. He was not, they were not each other's type at all. At all. They were not each other's type. I mean, I think it's clear as day to see that. So, um, 
on their day, you know, she, his her day shows up, whatever. So she's sitting there, she's drinking her little virgin daiquiri or whatever that she has. And so she tells him, you know, you can order a drink. I can't drink right now because, you know, um, unfortunately, I was a heroin addict and I was in jail for 10 years. And so because of that, I'm on parole and so I can't have alcohol. And he's like, oh, damn. I'm going to juzzle that drink real quick and hurry up and order another. He was like, oh, no, 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 I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't ready for this at all. She starts spilling her guts about everything, everything. Who she is, what she did, she been in prison, yada, 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 right? So it comes time to pay the bill. The lady come down and put down the check. So he like, okay, so how are we going to do this? Did you want to split it? Even I was like, nigga, split it? Who, first of all, who asked who on the date? Because if you ask me on the date, um, I ain't splitting nothing. I ain't splitting these legs. I ain't splitting that check. No. Uh-uh. Excuse me? So, but I do get it. She, I bet she was like, well, hell, I, I, I'm going to pay my way. I'm going to pay for what the hell I had then. Boom. It is what it is. She gave him $25, and I'm sure that's going to be the last time. she. Even if it wasn't for the, the fact that he wasn't going to pay for that, they ain't going to see each other no more. They weren't even on the same wavelength. That damn child. Y'all get on out of my face with that. Andrea and Lamar, y'all. Okay, so Andrea is grocery shopping with her daughter, her oldest daughter, and uh, they are out looking for food to cook for when he is released. Now, her daughter, Nyla, she's really not into it. She's like, look, you looking for food for him so you can cook it. Because uh, um, Andrea's trying to be like, no, he, well, he wants us to cook him a dinner for when, you know, he gets home and gets released. She's like, no, he wants you to cook him a dinner. I'm going to eat me some ramen noodles and I'm going to bed. I ain't got time for this. So, her friends um, back from Utah end up calling her to check on her, see how's it going and everything. And plus, they want to know how is it like living out in Los Angeles because, you know, they're all Mormon women and they're used to living in Utah. And they're not used to, they see L.A. as this big, glamorous life. Like, the fact that they sell alcohol in the convenience store is like a culture shock to her. She couldn't even believe that. And so, basically, she's saying that, um, you know... Her daughter, Nyla, which is, she is so beautiful. She's a beautiful little girl. That her and Lamar had a really, really close father-daughter relationship. Like, she even wanted to change her last name to Lamar's because they were so close. And so, when he went away, that messed her daughter up. Out of all three of her kids, her daughter, Nyla, took it the worst because they had a, such a close, you know, daddy-daughter relationship. And how now she doesn't trust Lamar. And how, for whatever reason, she doesn't trust African-American men, which... They daddy African American, which I mean, and, and maybe if they daddy, I don't know, maybe she has her own childhood trauma, whatever, about African American men. But for whatever reason, Lamar and his current situation is just even more fuel to the fire as to, you know, why she has an issue with African American men. That's neither here nor there. But Andrea is saying that, um, you know, her daughter would tear up letters that Lamar would send her. She wouldn't want to get on the phone and talk to him, none of that. So she's not looking forward to him coming back at all. None of her kids are. And so her friends are like, well, you know, how are you doing? And so she just, basically, she breaks down in the store. She's like, I can't believe he did this to our family. And I had to learn everything when I came out here. Like, she said 16 months ago, she uprooted her whole family, uprooted her life from Utah to Los Angeles. And as soon as they get there, he ends up getting Getting locked up she has to get a job she has to get a license she has to learn LA she has to learn how to drive she has to take care of her kids she was used to being a stay-at-home mom and so that this is like a big life-changing experience not just for her but for her kids as well and so she's bearing the burden of everything and so with him being locked up like it's just fuel to the fire so um her daughter ends up um, consoling her, like I said. She breaks down in a corner in a grocery store. Her daughter ends up consoling her, whatever. So the next day, she's on her way to go and pick him up from prison, right? So, you know, he gets out of prison or whatever. And um, the first thing this man asks about when he gets to her from being released is, where is my car? Not, how long have you been waiting out here? Thank you for holding me down. Where are the kids at? What we gonna eat tonight? Like, no, the first thing you ask about is where is my where is my damn car, really? And she's like, like, dog, like what what, what? hi motherfucker, hi, nigga, you've been in jail. How am I doing? I'm doing okay, thank you very much. Your goddamn car, she tells him that when you got locked up, I had to sell your car. I had to do what I had to do for the kids, right? And for the family. He like, man, bro, and she I was like, motherfucker, bro. Nigga, I got your bro, my nigga. What the hell? But um, 
she ends up playing a joke on him or whatever. She really didn't sell that man's car. She was just playing a joke on him and yada, yada, yada. But she just, I hope that he really don't, he has a lot of relationship building to do with these kids because these kids don't trust his ass for nothing. So I'm hoping for the kids' sake, at least they can get their shit together. He can get his shit together because it looked like it's going to go left in the next couple of episodes, which I hope it don't. And now my favorite hot mess fuckery couple of them all, Megan, Michael, and Sarah. So to pick up where we left off last time, so you know, um, it's Mike's mom, Carol, and his sister, Day Day, are there at his release, as well as Megan is there because Mike asked her to come there to be there when he gets released from prison. Sarah's not there. She's nine months pregnant. She's back at the store somewhere shopping with her homegirls, right? So, of course, Day Day does not want to talk to Megan because she's team Sarah all the way. She, Megan tries to talk to Day Day, but she's pissed off. Day Day gets up and walks away. So, Carol's mom ends up talking with Megan, and she's like, look, so... This whole situation with y'all, I don't know what's going on. And Megan tells her, I'm here because he asked me to be here. I've been with this man for two years. He has told me that he only had a baby mom. And then ever since this has happened, since he's got locked up the second time, he's telling me that he don't love her, he don't want to be with her, that he wants to be with me, and that he loves me. So I'm here because of the strength of what he's telling me. And so, like... Carol's mom is, I mean, Carol, Mike's mom, Carol is like, so when you found out that he was married, that didn't stop you from messing around with him and still trying to have a relationship with him. And Megan's like, no, that doesn't, I can't fall out of love with somebody just because I hear news, yada, yada, yada. Damn, I could, God damn it. Um, small disclaimer about myself. Long, many, 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 many years ago, I was dating a man for four months. Lied to me. The entire even lied to me about the number of children he had. If you're watching, you already know I'm talking about your goddamn ass. Hmm. And the moment I found out his ass was married, deuces both ways. You know who you is. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's Megan's ass. And but Megan came back and she checked his mama because she was kind of like, okay, well, if they they knew that what me and Mike had going on. He would say, look, this is my girl, yada, yada, yada. So if she knew that he was married, how come she didn't tell me? Better yet, how come you didn't tell me? Because she would even have conversations with his mom before. So that falls back on you as a mama because me, I'm not finna let my son, now I'm not finna get involved in the shit, but at the same time, look here, don't involve me in your crap with, when it comes to this right here. Because they come to me asking me, I'm gonna tell them the goddamn truth. That's just me though. And so <clears throat> she, you know, ends up telling, um, my, Carol ends up telling Megan basically like, look, you're not allowed at my house. Um, my son needs to be back at a certain time because he will have an ankle bracelet on. And so I, we ain't finna go through this again. Megan like, all right, fine. I see you when I pull up in front of your house. All right, bitch, it is what it is. So Mike gets out. His mom has her little time. Day Day has her little time. Mike and Megan end up going to eat lunch somewhere. While they're eating lunch, in the meantime, um, Day Day, his sister, ends up texting Megan and tells, no, ends up texting Sarah and tells Sarah, you know, Megan is here and Mike is now with Megan. So Megan again is shopping with her homegirls. That sets her off, which I feel bad for her in that sense. You nine months pregnant, about to pop at any time, and you finding out that your man is still out here doing the same old crap that you had been knowing that he was doing before, though. You've been knowing this. You've been knew this. But still, even still, you're with child. That is the last thing you need to be stressing over is what the hell your man is out here doing. So... She's pissed off about that, and, you know, she, luckily she got a homegirl there to console her, right? So, as Megan and Michael are eating, Megan asked him, like, how many other girls was it? Like, why did she lie to me? And it's like, I could see my early 20s self being in her situation, not with a man in prison, nothing like that, but just being lied to and being manipulated by a man, because he, that motherfucker was smooth as silk the way he finagled his way up out of that. She asked him how many other girls was it? Because Megan said that you cheated on I me. Mean, because Sarah said that you cheated on her, blah, 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 blah. Well, Sarah was blah, 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 blah. And it never got back to saying exactly how many girls it was unless they edited that part out. So, basically, he's, he's, it's like she's, 
she's forming the questions and he's agreeing on them though. Like she's like, okay, so basically what you're saying is you don't love Sarah, that you love me. He's like, yeah. She's like, okay, so basically what you're saying is that you're going to start looking for a divorce, law divorce lawyer and all that. And she was, and he's like, yeah. And so she said, when? He was like, as soon as I get situated. As soon as I get situated. Motherfucker, that mean it ain't gonna happen. It's gonna happen when it happened, and it might have to happen when she makes it happen because you ain't gonna do nothing to make that happen because you probably don't want them people putting your life from child support, which you already know it's gonna happen. If she has that baby full time, she has two kids. Come on now. And Megan, I'm sure you have watched enough reality TV and ratchet shows to know this shit finna draw on for a minute. I'm sorry. I got love for my brothers and sisters, but I just ain't got no faith in Mike. Mike is finna... Mike, girl. Anyways, so Megan drops Mike off at his mom's house. And before he gets out the car, she acts like she want to tell him something. She says she has a secret. And I'm telling you, Megan, do not be pregnant. Whatever the fuck you do, just don't be pregnant, girl. Please don't be pregnant. So he drops. She doesn't say anything to him. You know, she just... Acts like, you know, it is whatever. She asked him, who you gonna call when you get out of here? Oh, bitch, it ain't Ghostbusters. He gonna call his baby mama, his wife. Fuck. Which is exactly what he did. The moment he had a long time, he calls up Sarah. And acting like nothing is wrong. Because I'm guessing he probably didn't know that his sister done already went behind his back and told his wife that his side chick is there. So when he calls Megan, Megan's voice changes from Sarah to Shantae just like that i hate that i hate that about any i hate that 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 i'm not even gonna get into no details about it but i hate that the way her voice was one minute and then immediately when she got with mike it changed up it was like this at first and then it went like this girl bye just stop it but that was pretty much the end of the episode right there. It's going to get juicier as it goes. Um, let me know what you guys think about this review. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think. And um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ah, uh -huh.